Hi everybody and welcome to CMH Family Medicine Top Tips and Tutorials. I'm Dr. Madeleine Muller. Um, I'm one of the family physicians here at CMNH and today we're going to focus on a very common presentation where you've got a patient who arrives at your facility, um, clearly have TB symptoms and quite often they've already been seen by the clinic who has sent a gene expert and the gene expert is negative. So what is our approach to make sure that we get as much information to decide whether we want to start our patient on TB treatment but that we also don't delay the process too much? Um, so when the gene expert comes back negative, there's some things you can still do on the day and probably the most useful new addition has been the urinary lamb. And I will just go through those criteria again in the next slide just to remind us in which scenarios we can do the urinary lamb. Um, but usually if able and if you're at a hospital that has the facilities, your x-ray is going to be your next port of call if your gene expert is negative. And please remember to always request that lateral. Um, because we now, possibly, you know, if the gene expert's negative, the patient might literally just have lymph adenopathy, um, and you see that much better on a lateral than, than on the PA. Um, and then also just a reminder, if your patient comes in with HIV positive and a classic pleural effusion, we would consider that TB. So you're still going to do your tap and you're going to send away for all the good things. Remember your MCNS. Remember to put in two separate bottles enough fluid for both a gene expert and a TB culture. So that's your backup. Um, but even if that comes back as a transudate, in a patient with a very low CD4 count, they might not even have an exudate. Um, and therefore, we would start the patient on TB treatment already now. Um, and then the results might just help us to pick up, for example, if there's a, resist a resistant TB. These are just our indications for our TB lambs. I think most district hospitals do have access to these. And just to notice that for inpatients, um, you have to be HIV positive, obviously, but we don't have to be fussy for inpatients. So for inpatients, we can use TB lamb as a screening tool, regardless if they've got TB symptoms, regardless of their CD4 count, and irrespective if they have advanced HIV disease. But for outpatients, we're a little bit more fussy. It's mostly to save us a bit of money. Um, you have to have an HIV positive patient, they must have signs and symptoms of TB, um, and they've got a CD4 cutoff of 200. I know some people still use 100, so 200, you can do that lamb. Um, but also if you have a patient and you don't know what the CD4 is, and they come in with advanced HIV, HIV disease, stage 4, or they're seriously ill, you can also do a TB lamb in those, in those patients. So sometimes you might get to the end of the day, your lamb is negative, your gene expert is one of those non-specific, uh, your um, x-ray is one of those non-specific x-rays that's not really helpful, um, and you want to do some bloods. So what we usually do is you would take bloods today and then give the patient an antibiotic. And for HIV positive patients, for a chest infection, we would actually treat with coamoxiclav. And then you'll bring your patient back within three to five days to, to check the result and to see how they've responded to the antibiotics. So there's a whole battery of tests we can do, and if the patient's quite ill, you might test quite widely, but there's only very specific tests that's actually going to be helpful in terms of either supporting uh, or making us more or less suspicious on whether there is TB. And probably the most important is the hemoglobin. So if you've got a patient with a classic normocytic anemia or even a pancytopenia, um, that's going to be very helpful. An elevated white cell count, normal white cell count, not helpful. An elevated white cell count makes you less suspicious of TB and you're thinking maybe there's more of a bacterial infection there, but these are very nonspecific. So if you don't have much money, just do that HB. Um, and then, of course, an inflammatory marker, CRP. We do not use ESRs in our HIV-positive patients, very nonspecific in HIV-positive patients. If the CRP comes back very high and the patient's got TB symptoms, excellent. But again, if there's a normal CRP with very low CD4 counts, it does not exclude TB. Um, and then very helpful is just to look for signs of possible disseminated TB. Um, and for that, you're looking at the ALP and the gamma GT, and we're looking for an obstructive picture on that LFTs. So if the ALP and ALT are all up, you would expect a much much increased um, ALP. And that's partly because of lymphadenopathy in the abdomen pressing on the liver um, or actually liver granuloma sitting on the liver and growing into the liver. So just those four bloods is already going to help you uh, have a clue by the time the patient comes back um, a few days later. When your patient now returns, um, you will have to look at how did they respond to the antibiotic. You can now look at your blood results and you can go, oh, look, um, you know, the HB is actually normal, the CRP is very low, 
He's responded well to the antibiotics, then I'm less worried about TB. Didn't respond so well to the antibiotics. HP is quite low. CRP is up. Oh, look, the LP and gamma DT is but up. Um, and now we have to make a decision. Are we starting empiric treatment? Very helpful if you have an ultrasound and maybe you've done a, a, a little course on EFAST. So those are those different views that you can use in an emergency setting to look for um, to look for trauma. But the FASH is very similar to the to the FAST, um, but same views that you would use for the FAST. So if you already have those ultrasonography skills to go and practice, and what look what they but what the FASH looks for is specifically signs um, for TB. So it's a focused ultrasound for HIV TB. So you're going to look for effusions, pleural effusions, pericardial effusions, acidic effusions. You're going to look for large intra-abdominal nodes, and you're going to look for splenic hypodensities. And this can become a very much um, a lovely addition to your TB diagnosis, even if you're in a district hospital. If you're in a larger hospital, you might be able to now um, uh, request an ultrasound if that is possible. At this point, you actually need to have enough information to make a decision, am I going to give TB treatment or not? If you didn't get any bacterial con con bacteriological confirmation and you decide to start the patient on TB treatment, write down, list all the reasons that made you decide. These were the symptoms, this was the CRP, this was the HB, because that you're actually going to follow up to see if your patient is responding to treatment. So please remember, there's always a chance the patient might have drug-resistant TB. So you want to actually do a few other things as well, just to make sure you've got something in the back pocket. So if there's any glands that are enlarged, please put a needle in it. Um, so great if you just get a if you get a whole lot of fluid back, excellent. You can just send those off for Gene Expert, for example. If you're only getting cells, so you're able to make your little slides, a very useful tip is that you can take that nab needle and you can rinse it with two mils of saline and then do a gene expert on that. So you put two mils of saline in your little um, in a little bottle, take your needle, draw up the, the saline, rinse your needle out back into that little bottle and you can send that for a gene expert. Um, some labs do have what they call the the Middlebrook TB culture medium and that you can also rinse your needle for that if you want to send a TB culture. Um, please remember, if your patient does have any confusion or any suspected TBM symptoms on your LP to send enough fluid, and you can take extra, don't worry, you're not going to tap the patient dry, but the more fluid you have, the better the yield for your gene experts and your TB cultures, um, so don't leave that out while you're busy doing your, 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 your LP. And then also very useful... Um, if you, especially if you've got a lamb that's positive, is that urine cultures in disseminated TB has potentially got quite a high yield. So for a positive lamb, just send that you know, urine off, preferably an earning morning sample that's quite concentrated. Um, and again, if a few weeks down the line, your patient's not responding to treatment, you might be lucky enough to get a drug resistant um, picture uh, from, from one of these investigations. Thank you.